Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers here, um, and today we're going to discuss part two of an incredible paper with a really supportive uh, epidemiologic outcome uh, in the space that we work in. It's a paper that was published in the, the Journal of American College of Cardiologists. So it's a cardiology paper published in October of 2023, this month. And um, the title is 10-Year Cardiovascular Risk in Patients with Newly Diagnosed Type 2 Diabetes. The first part discussed the information, the data that they gathered associating um, diabetes with earlier and more severe forms of cardiovascular disease, a decade earlier in a, in a prospective cohort. This is a study out of Denmark. And as we scrutinized the, the paper, it was very interesting. Hidden in one of their supplements, they gave 14 supplements. Now, this is supplemental table number 11 that we're going to discuss today. Remember, this work was sponsored by a grant from the Danish cardiology department. So it's a heavily... Uh, this study heavily favored um, the lipid heart hypothesis. These, all, these people all believe that statins are important and that lipids and heart disease uh, are responsible for, uh, or, or lipids are responsible for cardiovascular disease. However, this study is slowly starting to provide more and more evidence of changing these folks' minds. And in fact, there's something I just want to read here is in terms of that changing of mind. And it says that, Type 2 diabetes mellitus is now in the cardiologist's wheelhouse. Mm. Uh, and that conflicts directly with the belief that fat and heart, uh, that fat causes a problem. So as part of these, this excellent Danish study that is biased toward lipid heart, at least the authors are, how do I know that? Because um, friends of ours, people that work in the space, David Diamond and Gary Taubes have, I think Gary has, but definitely David, have communicated with the authors, and the authors have still supported lipid heart. So we know that they're biased to that in their own personal writing, email sharing emails. Um, this paper was originally, I always like to give credit, this paper was originally brought to a little subgroup of people that work in the space by a wonderful guy, a Dr. Mark Kukazella, um, who works at, uh, for the VA administration up in West Virginia, absolutely brilliant, and as frustrated as I am in the space, but uh, Mark brought this paper to uh, our attention, and uh, Gary Taubes, David Diamond, myself, and Mark have all looked at this buried supplemental uh, table number 11, and that's I, I kept this for the second part because this is specific about lipid heart, uh, about cholesterol, lipids, and statin use from this paper. So this detailed... Cohort. So what these guys did, uh, just to refresh you, is they looked at a group of, they took a total cohort of about 500,000 people. They took um, uh, one group that were newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and the other group, population and age matched, age and sex matched, that didn't have diabetes. So they used the threshold of 6.5 A1C with a normal A1C of 5.2 and they divided those above with uh, with above 6.5 and those below. And unfortunately in this paper, they didn't give us the stratification of the normal group in terms of A1C. Be that as it would have been nice to have known what the stratification was and looked at that group below 5.2, this group and that group as three separate groups with this below 5.2 being our control study. Uh, but they didn't ask that question because they don't have that knowledge. But they did a detailed study and a lot of data gathering. I really compliment them for that. Good, good, good study, because they were also willing to counteract their own biases. But here's an interesting study, and they still were defending this data. So what they looked at in Table 11 was cardiovascular disease risk in those people with type 2 diabetes. So they looked at the group that, that developed cardiovascular disease. Remember, these all were naive. They did not have cardiovascular disease at the beginning of the study. So over 10 years, that did develop cardio, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. And they stratified them. This table stratifies those patients, just the type 2 diabetics, between those that were prescribed statins and those that were not. Very interesting. So um, the standard convention in this country and world over, College of Cardio Cardiologists will tell you that if someone has a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, the standard of care the best practices guidelines, at least from them, is to simultaneously with treating the diabetes, put these people on a statin. 
because they recognize that diabetics have a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, and they still believe that statins protect you from heart disease. So let's look at the data. Is that true? And this is a really cool table. And what they did is they stratified this. You can see here on this table, and it's in the show notes. It'll, the reference will be there. They looked at multiple age groups. So they, they divided this in women, women and men below the age of 40, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, all the way through to above 80 in 10-year cohorts. And all these people had uh, diabetes. And they looked at those with diabetes who were on a statin, those were, that were not. And the data is incredibly powerful. And it reflects, quite frankly, the same data that all of the statins trials did. Trials did. The Jupiter study, which was one of the first studies, but all of these trials, and David Diamond will tell you this, none of the statin trials, zero of the statin trials, showed a population-based absolute risk reduction with statins. Zero of the, sta of the papers that support the use and the prescription of statins showed an absolute risk reduction that benefited the group that used statins. The differences were so minuscule that they were not statistically significant. So in order to convince people that statins are beneficial, when the data, the absolute risk is not beneficial, they then looked at relative risk and all the numbers that are quoted to you except for one tiny fraction of the population, all the numbers that are quoted to you that say statins are beneficial are based on relative risk, which as a statistical tool is a way to lie to you about the data. And when you say, oh, it improves your risk of a heart attack or a stroke or death by 36% like Crestor or 44% like Resuvastat, that is based on relative risk when the absolute risk numbers are zero. Now, this study did not mean to do this, but they, they, this was not the purpose of the study, but it was a byproduct of the study. And overall, overall, for each decade of the population with type 2 diabetes, the most serious ones, the ones in which um, the standard of care recommendations are to prescribe a statin, and with CVS, when I prescribe a diabetic medication and a patient is not on a statin, send me a dirty letter to tell me I'm performing malpractice, and I'm practicing below the standard because I didn't prescribe a statin, here's the data they base it on. This paper, in every age group for women and for men, zero difference. Zero difference. Okay? The maximum difference, so let's go through this by cohort, and I'm going to leave the people under the age of 40 for a few minutes and come back to that. But the difference between Women of the group uh, in 40 to 49 was a 0.2% difference. A 0.2% difference. Uh, in the men of the same age group, a minus 0.1 difference. <laughs> in other words, the group, let me just get this right. Yeah, the group on the statin had a 0.1% worse outcome than the group taking a statin. Really no difference, no difference, no difference. So don't, don't think I'm saying uh, the opposite but, because I don't want to be like the statin people, but no difference. And that is true for men between the age of 60 and 69. And even those that didn't, the, the weakest was a zero and the best was a 0.5% difference. All of that not significant at an absolute risk. So no benefit in people that are at the highest risk with type 2 diabetes of cardiovascular disease, where they demonstrated cardiovascular disease, no difference whether they took a statin or not. And then just kind of as an outlier, here's what's interesting. If you look at women under, and this is just statistics, but at the same time, that's what they did. That's what the statin people did. They just lied about statistics. So I'm not arguing one way or the other. I'm arguing against what they told us. So if you look at women under the age of 40, and if you look at men over the age of 80, both of those groups, 2.5% and 2.6%, increased risk of harm, increased risk of cardiovascular disease if those people took a statin. So if you're a woman under the age of 40, at least by the study, you have a higher chance, a slightly higher chance of developing cardiovascular disease 
if you took a statin as well. And yet the College of Cardiologists recommendation, and they tell you it's malpractice, you're functioning outside of the guidelines if you do not prescribe a statin to these people, and yet this evidence and their own evidence shows no proof. How are they going to deal with this? So, so, so you know what they did when David Diamond and a few others emailed them and asked them, well, does this mean that statins don't work? They then threw out, and legitimately so, oh, but we can't say that because of a normal confounder. So in other words, if, if someone's pretty healthy, what they're saying is that perhaps only the sickest people were prescribed statins and the less sick people were not prescribed statins. That's a confounding variable. And that's true. That's very relevant. Very relevant. But it doesn't prove that statins work. In fact, there's no proof that statins do work. So remember this, folks. All the statin trials, the Jupiter trials and all the other trials were designed with a concept to prove these were randomized, randomized control trials, prospective randomized control tests, the highest trials, the, the highest quality trials except for a meta-analysis of those and the meta-analyses have also been done that showed no difference. So we've got corroborating evidence that there is no absolute risk benefit to taking a statin. And yet the, pharma the pharmacologists and the cardiologists are telling us based on relative risk that statins are beneficial when there's no proof that they are. So the null hypothesis of any study is that the intervention caused no benefit. And every one of the statin trials, including this one, shows no benefit. So if there's no benefit, then how the hell can we keep prescribing statins? Because they lied to us. They distorted the reality. And in fact, what's funny is just now this past week in the news, uh, cough medications have been taken off by the recommendation of the FDA because a certain, uh, a certain component of the cough medications by the FDA has been shown not to benefit, not to reduce cold symptoms. So for a cold medicine, the FDA has recommended that any cold medicine in, that, that is based on this ingredient should be taken off the shelves and CVS took it off the shelves because it doesn't benefit people. So if a statin was the equivalent of the cold medicine, then CVS should be taking statins off their shelves. And yet everybody, is, including these guys, are still trying to defend and promote the use of statins. And, and Gary Taubes, who a lot of you know, is a brilliant science writer, a science author, uh, why we get fat and what to do about it, amongst others, calories in, calories out, great author. He's on this group, and he and I have had a little bit of an intellectual debate. And Gary said to me, because I said uh, in, my, in my writing to them, this study again demonstrates that there's no proof that statins work. And, and Gary then argued with me and said, well, you've got to look at the confounders and we really need a randomized control trial to demonstrate that. Well, we have these randomized controls trials, Gary. And they didn't prove that statins work, except in one tiny fraction of the population that's dealt with in another video. But for the majority of us, statins have no benefit. So nobody has ever proven to me that statins have benefit, and yet... You, the, the, the crappy scare out of you as a patient, if your LDL is high, if your cholesterol is high, and nobody talks about your diabetes. And I would argue vociferously with Gary that they've never proven that statins work, so they should be on the shelf, and we're still looking for proof that they do work. And yet every doctor out there who's unaware of this data because it's not promulgated out there, has bought into the lie and is scaring the crap out of their patients and putting them and focused on an unnecessary medication, eat less fat, eat more plant-based, take your statin, and completely disregarding the diabetes element. And at least this paper brings forth the carbohydrate insulin stuff, the diabetes stuff. But further proof, or further absence of proof, that statins work. So... Not only do I need proof that statins work, I, objectively, I also need proof that lipid is going to cause a problem. And none of these papers have shown that to me. So there's no way on God's earth I'm going to be taking a statin for my high cholesterol and my high LDL. And maybe I will die of a heart attack or a stroke. 
But it wasn't because I did or did not take a statin. That's irrelevant and immaterial based on this data to my cardiovascular risk. What's more important for me is to manage and watch my blood sugar and to wear a CGM, thanks Dexcom, and I took mine off just a little bit ago, um, but to monitor my blood sugar and to change my diet away from carbohydrates and to increase fat in my diet, that is more important in terms of protecting my heart. No matter how you try to distort that reality or pretend the data doesn't matter, even with a guy like Gary Taubes, we're using statins based on a lie. Show me the evidence to actually use a statin because there's no proof. So I recently, just, just this past week, put out a statement and I stand by the statement. My statement says this, and I put it on my Instagram post. And this paper corroborates it. My statement is this. As far as I am aware... There are no scientific papers demonstrating the absolute risk benefit of statins in reducing cardiovascular disease, but several studies showing no benefit. And I stand by that statement. And I believe as cardiologists wrap their heads around this, they'll never tell you they were wrong, but they'll say, oh, I always believed this. I always knew that sugar was the problem. But over the next decade, the GLP-1s and the diabetes medications are going to become standard of care for cardiovascular disease and we're quietly going to let statins go so that statin therapy and low-fat low diets are going to be obsolete in the next 10 to 20 years. And that agenda is not going to be driven by healthcare people, even though I'm standing on the rooftops shouting this U.S. dietary guidelines won't even allow me to comment at their, at their meeting because I'm irrelevant. But it's going, that agenda is going to be driven by industry by pharma selling diabetic medication over statins. And slowly, 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 the cardiologists have, that have made this awful mistake are going to come around. And a guy like uh, Dr. Agatson, who does the CAC score, has already come around. Cardiologists like Dr. Adkins already come around. But Art Agatson, <laughs> the, the cardiologists buy totally into the CAC score thing. They don't test for it because it conflicts with their carbohydrate, with their lipid heart hypothesis. But Art Agatson is changing that narrative within the cardiology space. Atkins did the same thing. But Atkins has been dead for over 20 years and we still refute his information. I am the carb addiction doc. If you want to know where your truth lies, your personal truth, let's get your blood work done. Let's analyze your blood work. Set up a consult. 561-517-0642. Text to WhatsApp that number. We'll try to set it up. I'm very, very busy, so it may be down the road. And if you like my content, please subscribe to this channel to hear more. Leave a comment. I will always answer back on those comments if they're reasonable. Don't troll me. You can disagree with me. Absolutely fine. And if you really like our content and it's benefited you and it's pushing you forward in terms of your metabolic health, throw us a dollar. Throw us a buck at our PayPal account. The information is in the show notes, as are the references, as are the graphics. I hope this helps. Take care.